taping is the linear measurement of the horizontal distance between two points using a surveyor's tape. Observation of horizontal distances by taping consists of applying the known length of a graduated tape directly to a line in a number of times. Taping over smooth or on a level ground. The following materials are necessary in this work. First, the measuring tape. Then, markers, which can either be marking pins or chalk. The range poles used to indicate the two points in the whole length of the horse. Plumb up, and some number of pebbles or small stones. The professor assigns the accessible and unobstructed course to be measured by the surveyor on a level ground. Find a chalk and a marking pin. Mark the endpoints by a chalk if it is on a pavement or by a marking pin if it is on a soft ground. Then assign the endpoints as A and B. Assign a person to be the range pole man that will hold the pole vertically and steadily during the enter taping procedure at B to keep the complete taping process aligned and straightened. The tape is now stretched out on the ground on the straight path along A to B where the zero end is held ahead. Note that zero end is nearer B than A. Assign a person to be the front tape man and rear tape man who is responsible for giving the signal to the front tape man if his path is straight while the front tape man is responsible to pull the tape out once the tape is aligned already. The front tape man gets a pin and sticks it vertically in the ground exactly to have an accurate measurement opposite the zero meter mark on the tape. Both the front and the rear tape man must lift the tape coordinately to move forward along the line AB to measure the next tape length. Also, the rear tape man holds one pin while the rest of the pins, which are 10 pins, are held by front tape man. By now, the rear tape man holds one marking pin which signifies one tape length. Repeat the procedure 4 to 6 to complete the next tape length measurement. Make sure that the rear tape man pulls the pin before lifting the tape to move on to the next tape length. The rear tape man holds two marking pins to connote two tape lengths have been measured. Repeat the same process until all the pins being held by the front tape man have been used up which signifies one tally. Tally is equal to 10 tape lengths. After the tally has been completed, the rear tape man will return the 10 pins to the front tape man to proceed in measuring the length of the horse. Note that one round is when all the 10 pins are now being held by the rear tape man. Also, a pebble is put into the pocket of the rear tape man to note that one pebble is equal to one tally. If more than one tally is needed, repeat the same procedure. Upon reaching point B, the partial length must be measured accurately up to centimeters by the rear tape man, while the front tape man is holding the serial mark at B and both of them are holding the tape dot. The number of small pebbles in the rear tape man's pocket indicates the number of tallies that have been made. 
while the number of pins in his possession indicates the number of additional tape lengths. The course is measured back and forth to complete the number of trials required by the professor. This is recorded in Table 2.1, Taping Over Smooth or Level Ground. Proceed to computation. To compute for the total distance, get the total number of full tape lengths and then add the partial tape length to the product of the length of one full tape length and total number of full tape lengths. To compute for the mean distance, determine the sum of total distance, then divide the sum by the number of trials. To get the relative precision, determine the probable error of the mean, then divide by the mean distance, and then reduce the numerator to unity to determine the relative precision. Taping over an even ground. Number one, same course is measured in this time. But the tape now will not be supported by the ground. It must be held an eye level distance above the ground. Number two, the rear and the front tape man hold the plumb line over the center of the hub. Number three, the front tape man must hold this plumb line an arm length away from his body for the rear type man to clearly see if it is aligned in the range pull at B. For the fourth one, once the rear tape man approves the alignment, the front tape man holding the zero mark will now pull the tape out and drops plumb bob on the ground. This will serve as the mark on the ground with the dent to guide the front tape man where he must place his marking pin. Number 5. This is need to be done continuously until point B is reached. Note that the partial length must also be measured as in procedure A. Repeat the procedure. To complete the next tape length measurement, repeat the same process until all the pins being held by the front tape man have been used up which signifies one tally. Repeat the same procedure. Tally is equal to 10 tape lengths. Note that one round is when all the 10 pins are now being held by the rear tape man. Also, a pebble is put into the pocket of the rear tape man. Note that one pebble is equal to one tally. After the tally has been completed, the rear tape man will return the 10 pins to the front tape man to proceed in measuring the length of the horse. Upon reaching point B, the partial length must be measured accurately up to centimeters by the rear tape man while the front tape man is holding the serial mark at B and both of them are holding the tape dot. The number of small pebbles in the rear tape man's pocket indicates the number of tallies that have been made, while the number of pins in his possession indicates the number of additional tape lengths. The course is measured back and forth to complete the number of trials required by the professor. Tabulate the data in Table 2.2, taping over an even ground. Now, proceed to computation. In computing the total distance, get the total number of full tape lengths and then add the partial tape length to the product of the length of one full tape length and total number of full tape lengths. To compute for the mean distance, determine the sum of total distance, then divide the sum by the number of trials. 
to get the relative precision, determine the probable error at the mean, then divide by mean distance, and reduce the numerator, the unit, to determine the relative precision.